Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Duck Riettes. That's right. I'm not sure if we're supposed to pronounce the S. So to play it safe, I'm going to pronounce it both ways. But whether you call it Duck Riettes or Duck Riette, what I do know for sure is that this is one of the most delicious things ever invented. And while it does take a little time and there are a few steps, it's incredibly simple. And the final results are well worth the effort. So let's go ahead and get started. And we need to prep our duck. And for that, we're going to need two different things. The first, a little seasoning mix, which consists of kosher salt, some dry thyme, and some freshly ground black pepper. And we'll just give that a little mix and set that aside. And it's on to seasoning mixture number two. So in a bowl, we're going to take a whole handful of whole peeled garlic cloves, along with some sliced ginger. No need to peel it, just slice it up. We're also going to want some bay leaves. We also want some orange peel, just the orange parts, not the white parts. And we also want a big bunch of fresh thyme. And basically what we're making here is a potpourri. But instead of making a room smell slightly less horrible, this is going to make the inside of the duck cavity smell incredible. And the meat taste incredible when it's done. So we'll give that a little mix. And at that point, we're ready for our whole duck. So I have one ready to roast whole duck that's about four and a half pounds. That's usually the size you're going to find in the market. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our salt, dry thyme, and pepper mixture and season this thoroughly inside and out. And for this step, I want you to use about two thirds of that salt mixture. We'll save the rest for the top. And once that duck's been seasoned thoroughly inside and out, we will take our duck cavity potpourri and we'll go ahead and shove it in that duck. And by the way, like I've said before, there's really no way to look cool doing this. So ideally you're not being watched. But anyway, we're gonna fill that cavity with our aromatic potpourri. And at that point it's ready to prep for the oven. So what we're gonna do is take a heavy baking dish or pan and I'm gonna use two giant pieces of heavy duty foil. Oh yeah, don't try to use that cheap stuff from the dollar store. Heavy duty foil, two giant pieces. I have one going one way, one going the other. And then we'll go ahead and slide in our duck and we'll top it all over with the remaining salt, thyme, and black pepper mixture. And then what we'll do is we'll wrap it with that first piece of foil, nice and tightly. We'll wrap it with that other piece. This does not have to be airtight, but you do want a relatively tight package. And then once we've wrapped that up, what we're gonna do is slowly roast this at 250 degrees for about five or six hours or until we can easily pull the meat off the bones. And about five hours later or so, I pulled mine out and it looked like this. And I'm imagining yours probably will too. So I'm gonna take some tongs and as you can see, I can pretty easily pull that meat off the leg and from the inside of the thigh. And of course, for some reason, I'm using really dull, really slippery black plastic tongs. So it's kind of hard to get a grip, but as you can see, even so, the meat's coming off very easily. Let me go ahead and flip this over. And while we do want to be able to easily pull the meat off the bone, what we don't want to do is cook this so long it just falls apart on its own. Okay, that would be too far. But as long as the meat will easily come off like this, we're good to go. And at this point, all we're going to do is rewrap this and let that cool on the back of the stove to room temperature. Because what we do want to do is refrigerate this thoroughly before going on to the next step. And you don't want to put it in your fridge hot, okay? By the way, international symbol for this pan is hot. Put a towel on the edge. But anyway, let that cool down to room temp, and then we will pop that in the fridge, ideally overnight. You want this thoroughly, thoroughly chilled before moving on to the next step. So I did refrigerate mine for 12 hours, and then the next day we're going to unwrap it and begin the divide and conquer step. It's one of my favorite steps. And we're basically looking for three things here. Of course, we have our meat. We're going to pick off all that duck meat, but we're also going to have this incredibly delicious duck gelatin. And if you're wondering, yes, I think you're ready for that jelly. And in addition to the meat and the gelatin, we're also going to have copious amounts of duck fat. And basically the plan here is we're going to pick all that meat off the bones, all those chunks of meat, just throw those in a bowl. Don't worry about breaking them up or shredding them. That's going to happen when we mix it. And besides a bowl of duck meat, you also should get a saucepan filled with the bones and other scraps. All right, we're not going to do it in this video, but of course you're going to make stock with that. And then last but not least, we have our pan that's filled with fat and gelatin. So what we want to do is separate this by heating it. So we're going to scrape that into a saucepan. Place that over medium high heat until it gets hot. And this video was already way too long. So I'm not going to show that happening, but I'm pretty sure you can picture this melting and getting hot. And by the way, it does not have to come to a boil or simmer. And then as soon as that mixture is hot, we'll go ahead and pour that through a strainer. So once that's strained, it should nicely separate. And by simply ladling from the top, you'll get that amazing duck fat. And then if you go in deep with that ladle, you can easily pull up some of that duck stock, which as you saw is made up of that amazing gelatin. Okay, so that's all set. Our duck meat is picked and we are ready to start mashing the meat. Oh yeah, we're gonna mash meat, but not before we flavor it. So first up, we're gonna drizzle in about a tablespoon or two of some kind of cognac. I believe Armagnac is very traditional. If times are tough, just go with brandy. Next up, we're gonna do a little freshly ground black pepper and a little shake of cayenne, just a touch. We're also gonna do some freshly chopped chives and 
some Italian parsley. We're also going to add a little chunk of room temperature butter. Okay, that should be soft, not cold. And then we're going to go ahead and add a few tablespoons of our duck fat. And that should still be warm. And then we're also going to add a little bit of that duck stock, which when cold is going to turn back into that gelatin, which is going to help firm this up a little bit, give it a little bit of body, and of course flavor. And then what we'll do is we'll take the back of a spoon. I just like using a big wooden spoon. And we'll start mashing all that together. And what's going to happen is we start working this mixture with the spoon. That warm duck fat and that warm duck stock is going to basically emulsify into that cold duck meat. So keep mashing and mixing until you have something that resembles this. And it's going to look and feel as awesome as it's going to eventually taste. And at this point, we're basically done. But of course, I'm going to taste. And believe it or not, mine needed a pinch of salt. And yours probably will too. So I added a little salt, mixed that in. I gave it one more taste. And the salt was perfect. Everything was perfect. Except I remembered, I do like to put a touch of Dijon in this. And I'm talking just a touch, like a half a teaspoon. So I'm going to mix in just a little for a little bit of acidity. But anyway, of course, final seasoning is up to you. You are the Justin Tuck of your preserved duck. And once our meat has been flavored and mashed and mixed and seasoned, we are ready to transfer it into some kind of container. And I highly suggest you use one of these crocks with the sealable top. What I'm going to do is fill that up. I'm going to smooth out the top. And then we're going to do one last very, very traditional step. We're going to cover the top with a little more of that melted duck fat. Now here we're basically doing it for show. But this was originally a way to preserve it even longer. And then just to make it pretty, I'm going to add a little more black pepper and maybe a little orange zest and maybe a few thyme leaves. You get the idea. And then we're going to seal that up and put that in the fridge for as long as we can stand. All right, this really is significantly better after it sits for a few days. Of course, that bag of radishes gives me away because I'm not going to wait. I'm going to finish this video and we're going to dig in. We're going to serve this on some nice crostini. And that is one of the most delicious things you'll ever taste. It's just insanely good. On one hand, you're eating this incredibly decadent spread that tastes like it's almost all fat. But on the other hand, it's also incredibly meaty. Just a beautiful, beautiful combination. So that was just an incredibly delicious bite. And I would finish this piece, but it needs more duck riot on there. And you know what? In hindsight, the freakishly small, freakishly small wooden spoon was a bad choice. But that's okay. I made it work. Oh, and one more thing. If you're thinking, man, those crostini look incredibly delicious. What's up with those? Those are my famous crostini Dijonese. Oh yeah, mustard flavored crostini, which I will be showing you how to make soon. But anyway, there we go, duck riots. I believe this technique was originally done with pork, but you know what, in general, if you can do it with pork, you can do it with duck. And I definitely think you should. So I really do hope you give this a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.